I got so many bad memories just stacked up. I don't know how to believe in a better future. I can't even believe in me. It feels like it's always gonna be this way. But here's the thing you're going to find hard to believe. We are having confidence building experiences, but because of our trauma science, we are not remembering it. That's why I created the reflections times three formula for bullet journaling. First for myself, and then I figured out, hey, this works, do it again, and share it with others. Wins, insights, moving forward. Weekly reflections, monthly reflections, 90 day reflections. This is my first reflections times three bullet journal all the way back from the year 2020. And this was my first week. Each day, just jot down quick single line notes, shorthand style. Don't worry about wins or insights in the moment. Just log your day, even if it feels like a bad one. Then at the end of the week, that's when you reflect. Suddenly the good stuff you thought you lost shows up again. Your own notes jog your memory and you realize more went right than you remembered. But what if your week was nothing but bad? That's normal. In fact, my first week, <laughs> no wins, but plenty of insights. Let's be real. Trauma makes us a little cynical, but reflection turns the tables. You're literally telling your hippocampus what to remember just by reflecting. It lowers dynorphin's negativity bias and raises dopamine's confidence signal. Over time, that seesaw effect between dynorphins and dopamine shifts. You can get the full guide for free on my site, defeatingchildhoodtrauma.com. Look for the category reflections times three bujo. All five articles I'll try to link in the description. You'll be the one laughing all the way to the bank in the future when I turn it into a paid course and then you'll be like, nah, 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 nah. I don't have to take this course cause Janae gave it to me for free. So go get my favorite tool, the one I still use to this very day. Tomorrow we'll be tackling the biggest question I got from the past series, how to safely work on memory retrieval without re-traumatizing yourself.